So, in the Quran, we've got Allah swearing by literally uh, everything. We'll be talking about that in a little, in a few moments. Um, given that we find these things in the Muslim sources, I'm truly interested in how we can sit here and poke fun at the doctrine of the Trinity. Now, the real basis I find uh, for Ten reconciling seconds. these texts with the doctrine of Tawheed is that Muslim scholars don't let you know this stuff, which is why you think it's funny when you're hearing it. Time is up, Dr. Wood. <laughs> Uh, now we're going to start our second part, which is the 12-minute the rebuttal. And going first is Mr. Muhammad Hijab. You can go ahead. I think David Wood has said some career-ending embarrassing statements today. I mean, to be honest with you... After 20 years of researching Islam, you come with this. Okay, let's deal with one, one by one. It says, Allah says, uh, that Allah yusalli ala nabi and he's here saying that he prays to the Prophet. There's a difference between yusalli lahu and yusalli ala in the Arabic language. I knew this was going to happen. I knew this was going to happen. <laughs> I knew I was going to have to give you a free Arabic lesson here today. I knew it. And that's why the translators put for, not to the Prophet. You don't know what the, the words in Arabic mean. Don't hear, speak salah. This, come on, please, don't embarrass yourself. Allah has parts. He says Muslim scholars say we should take this literally. Which Muslim scholars? <laughs> Which Muslim scholars? Uh, he says, Kullu shay'in halik illa wajha. In Surah Al-Qasas, chapter 20 of the Quran, it means everything is destroyed except for his face. And this means that Allah, all his body parts will be destroyed. He has body parts in these things. First of all, the word kull in Arabic doesn't necessarily mean all. As Subki wrote a book, Al Kul wa Matadul. And he said, and he shows with examples, that the word Kul doesn't mean all. I'll give you an example. In chapter 46 of the Quran, Surah Al Ahqaf, to Dammiru Kulu Shayin bi idni rabbiha. Fa asbahu la yura illa masakinahum. That the wind destroyed everything, Kul Shay, the same words here in Surah Al Qasas. Everything was destroyed except for their houses. If it meant every single thing, it wouldn't have been their houses would not be there. So the word Kul doesn't mean that in Arabic language. Once again, it's a problem with language. He says that, this is exactly his words, he said the Qur'an is an eternal person. Tell me one scholar in the history of Islam who said that. This is a lie. He says, the Qur'an is, a, it, it, you have to, it will come as a shafi'ah on the day of judgment. So if, this is the question, I'll put it better for you, I'll help you, yeah? If the Qur'an is an attribute of God, how can it intercede for you? This is what he's saying, right? It's a good question, this is a good question. But it's not a proper understanding of the hadith. This is a, the only good question you had. I'll give it to you. This is the only good question you had. The, the hadith says, Iqra al Quran. So it's not that the Quran, i.e., the attribute of Allah that will intercede for you on the day of judgment, but it is your qira'a of the Quran and the thawab that you get of the Quran, which means the reward you get from the recitation of the Quran, not the Quran as an attribute of Allah. Yeah. <laughs> He says, therefore, there's 114 persons of the Qur'an, two kokwe fallacy, two kokwe fallacy. I told you he would do it and appeal to hypocrisy. So here are you admitting that having more than one person of a being of God is wrong because you should leave to Trinitarianism then. But obviously, as we know, there's no one in the history of Islam that referred to the surah of the Qur'an as persons. This is wrong. You don't know about Islam. Here you're being educated. He said, وَلَمْ تَكُنْ لَهُ صَاحِبَ He didn't know the Arabic, but I'm going to give him the, uh, the Arabic in chapter 6, verse 108 of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says that Allah did not have a mate. So does this mean, what does this mean? That uh, 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 biological, they had a discussion about biological. Really and truly, how can you have a begotten son? There's only three options. Number one, biology. Number two, adoption. And number three, metaphor. And if you say it's not biology, and it's not adoption, it must be a metaphor. So Jesus is not a son of God. <laughs> Okay, and then he says that the prophet, they, they played, you know, they tried to get his hair and the spit and these things. Okay, well if you think spitting on someone makes you a god, well that's what it implies. And I wonder why you look at every other verse of the Bible as implying that Jesus was God. Because for you, a spit, that's, that's making me a god now. <laughs> I mean... 
Don't embarrass yourself in front of me. Assalamu alaikum. He said this means that he's interceding because it's a narrative voice. Assalamu alaikum. We say this in the tashahud every time. It's a narrative voice. However, let's not say it's a narrative voice. Let's give it to him. He says this must mean that the Prophet Muhammad is omnipresent. Yes, he's omnipresent. Let's, let's have fun with him today. There is a hadith in Bukhari which says that whenever one person does salah on the Nabi, which means blessings and pr praise on the, the, the Prophet, blessings on the Prophet, the angel will carry that and give it to him. It doesn't mean that he's hearing it everywhere. The angel is moving it around. This is from the will of Allah. And if you didn't know that, now you do. He says that Kalimatullah, that Isa being referred to as the word of Allah, must mean that he is divine. So uh, although the Quran says clearly that he's not divine, no, it makes a mistake, he is divine. Well, it, you're all over the place, you're fumbling all over the place. It's embarrassing. Kalimatullah is, is defined in chapter 3 verse 58 of the Quran, where Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says, إِنَّ مَثَلَ عِيسَى عِنْدَ اللَّهِ عِنْدَ اللَّهِ كَمَثَلِ آدَمْ خَلَقَهُ مِنْ تُرَابٍ ثُمَّ قَالَ لَهُ كُنْ فَيَكُونَ Five minutes left. He said to him, be, and he was. The word is defined in the Quran as be. So Allah says be, and things are. Just like he said be with Adam, he said be with Jesus, and he was. He says that there are seven uh, planetary things in Arabia and these things. I mean, how can you make a, a judgment? First of all, I haven't got a reference for that. I didn't see a reference. He didn't say, yes, I give you a reference here. It says Bukhari, whatever. Even if he's got a reference, how do you know that the practice originated from that and not from Abraham? After all, Abraham, even in the Old Testament, yes, he existed, pre-existed before Jesus, even though you have, uh, you know, the physical Jesus. And he was there in the desert. And you have in the book of Psalms mention of pilgrimage. So, if this is the case, then I wonder why uh, this is mentioned. Now, this is, I think this is all that he kind of mentioned. I want to give you one principle, ladies and gentlemen, that will destroy everything he said. The Quran says, chapter 42, verse 11, شيء وهو السميع البصير, That there's nothing like him. You cannot do tashbih or tamthil of Allah. Anything that we see in the Quran, talking about the hand, talking about the face, all of these things, you can rest assured because of this verse and the other verse, that this means, yes, this means it cannot be compared to anything you imagine. In the Quran, anyways, I mean, every Muslim knows this. But the idea is, is an implicit admission here that I've lost. This is, this is what I come up with. I've lost. Yes, we know Trinitarianism is so confusing, but I'm going to show you how much, uh, you know, Tawheed is confusing as well. I have a, a admitted defeat, therefore I'm going down. I'm going down. I'm going to try and take you down with me. That's, that's really what you're trying to say to me, David Wood. I know by the look of your face here, you would probably agree with me. Let's be honest. Look at his face. Everyone, ladies and gentlemen, <laughs> take a look at his face. Yes. Anyways, I've got a few minutes left. Let me recite some Quran because I've done with this guy. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, he says in chapter number 19, verse number 31, about Jesus. This is what we believe about Jesus. قَالَ إِنِّي عَبْدُ اللَّهِ آتَانِي الْكِتَابَ وَجَعَلَنِي نَبِيًّا وَجَعَلَنِي مُبَارَكًا أَيْنَمَا كُنْتُ وَأَوْصَانِي بِالصَّلَاةِ وَالزَّكَاةِ مَا دُمْتُ حَيَّا وَبِرًّا بِوَالِدَتِي وَلَمْ يَجْعَلْنِي جَبَّارًا شَقِيًّا وَالسَّلَامُ عَلَيَّ يَوْمَ وُلِدْتُ وَيَوْمَ أَمُوتُ وَيَوْمَ أُبْعَثُ حَيَّا ذلك عيسى بن مريم قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون قول الحق الذي فيه يمترون ما كان لله أن يتخذ من ولدا سبحانه Subhanahu idha qada amran fa innama yakulu lahu kun fayakun wa inna Allah rabbi wa rabbukum fa'buduh hadha siratun mustaqim فاختلف الأحزاب من بينهم فويل للذين كفروا من مشهد يوم عظيم. The Isa said Jesus according to this is guys Christians. 
This is what Allah says in the Quran. Listen to it. Tell me if this is not a better model for you. Be honest. This is Jesus. He says, I am the slave of Allah, of God. He gave me the book and he made me a prophet. Just like in chapter 8 of Mark, verse... One minute left. Yes, 48. People thought Jesus was a prophet in, in the Old Testament, in the New Testament time, in the time of Jesus, when he was alive. And he made me blessed wherever I am. This is what we believe of Jesus. He made me blessed wherever I am. You know? And he told me to pray and to give charity so long as I am alive. You know? This is what we believe about Jesus Christ. I was good with my mother. I wasn't an arrogant person. And peace be upon me the day I was born, and the day I die, and the day I will come back to life. That is Jesus, son of Mary, the one who you differed about. Jazakumullahu khairan. Uh, before we start on uh, 